my name is Rob and welcome to Metal Monthly. In this video series we talk about everything that happened in metal music over the last month. From album releases to musician deaths to fun stories, it's all in there, it's pretty fun, it's chill, I have a beer, you're going to enjoy it. Let's get started. First up as always is album releases. What albums were released in April? First up we have Cannibal Corpse, Violence Unimagined. Fast, rough vocals, this is very Cannibal Corpse. However, it's not entirely impenetrable. I'm not a big fan of death metal, but I actually really got into this album. It's got fast, awesome guitar work, and the vocals are very heavy and rough, but they don't drown out the instruments, so I can really get into it. Plus, it has a lot of very fast drums, and yes, fast drums are my jam. That is the best thing. The drummer is always the best bit of any band. Fight me. <laughs> Next up, Witch Rot Hollow. You may be looking at that band name and thinking, oh, I vaguely recognise that. It's because this band went kind of viral online a few years ago when they announced a breakup statement on Facebook. The band's figurehead Peter said that his girlfriend had been cheating on him with the guitar player and so they decided to split up. And also the drummer died. So this went viral and it was mostly true. His girlfriend did cheat on him with the guitarist. Uh, the drummer left, he didn't die. That was mostly a reference to Spinal Tap. Anyway, this went big online, it was funny. But they've now released a new album called Hollow, and uh, it's really good. It's doom metal, so it's very slow and grungy with some absolutely stunning vocals. I absolutely loved this album. It's nihilistic, heavy, slow. It's the kind of thing you would listen to while you were doing heroin, I imagine. Next up, Bongzilla Weed Sconson. Wouldn't you know it, this band does stoner music. And yes, the album came out on 420, which is, love it. <laughs> so this album is very slow and doomy, but with some very high pitched vocals. It's very strange, but they're not very loud. They're quite quiet, almost like a whisper. Um, it's very strange, but I actually really got into this album. They remind me of Red Fang, except without the awesome vocals. They also remind me a lot of Electric Wizard because this album finished and then YouTube played the next album up, which was an Electric Wizard album. And I didn't notice until halfway through the album and kind of thought, oh, this album's been going on for quite a while. Oh, it's Night's Electric Wizard. So if you like Electric Wizard, you're gonna like Bongzilla. Next up, Gojira Fortitude. Gojira is a band that is huge and I never got into, but I figured I should really give this album a listen, shouldn't I? So it's very well-made metal music. It's heavy, the vocals are the right side of rough, and yet I just could not get into it. Maybe it's because I have a preconceived notion that I don't like Gojira, but I listened to the entire album and kind of thought, it's well-made music, it's not for me. I don't know why. So if you're not me, you're probably gonna really like this album because it's really well-made. And lastly, we have Escape the Fate Chemical Warfare. This album was a lot lighter than I was expecting. I've never really listened to Escape the Fate because I always thought they were heavier. So I listened to this album and it's more pop rocky. I mean, some bits are more pop heavy rocky, but I suppose that isn't much of a change. Um, I thought they sounded a lot like Fall Out Boy. So I played it with my girlfriend and she went, yeah, that's like Fall Out Boy. They used to be a bit heavier than this. So I think that's why nobody seems to like this album, because it's not as heavy as they were expecting. I think it's like a day to remember with their newest album. People just were expecting something heavier, something more akin to their classic stuff, and it wasn't. So next up is Musician Deaths. Every month I think it's right to honour the metal musicians who passed away in the past month. At the time of recording, there has only been one musician death this month. On April 18th, Lars Ratzenberger, former bassist of the German power metal band Metallium, passed away. Obviously condolences to his family. So next up, something more fun, Music Festival Explorer. This is my website where I talk about music festivals. Although it occurred to me that since creating that website a year and a half ago, I've not been to a music festival. <laughs> Anyway, I post on this website once or twice a month. This month I have written a blog post on the history of Devil Horns. I do, I do it like that, some people do it like that. Um, so the history of Devil Horns, who actually invented it, where it came from, how old it is, and other meanings that this gesture or this gesture can have in different cultures. There is a link to that down below. Although Loudwire also posted a history of Devil Horns suspiciously soon after I posted mine. Now am I saying that they entirely stole my blog post and rewrote it and put it on their much more successful website? Yes, yes I am. <laughs> and now to finish off we have fun stories. This is just some fun short stories about metal music from the past month that you may have missed. First up, a Russian man has been charged with distributing pornography after sharing a Rammstein video. Now as good as that headline is, the actual story is really horrible. So this is the story of Andrei Borovikov who shared the video on social media six years ago. Now he says these are actually just trumped up charges because he was a former coordinator for Alesky Navalny. 
Okay, so this story went from fun to political dystopia pretty quickly. Um, let's go to something more fun. So next up, Download Festival have announced 70 plus bands for Download Festival 2022. I was very excited for this until I looked through it and they're pretty much just re-announcing all the bands that they had already announced for 2021. If there are any new bands, I think there are only very small bands, I couldn't see any. Let me know in the comments, I'm sure I've missed something huge. Now to be fair, this is still a really good lineup. I am still excited for Download Festival 2022, but bear in mind that by that point, I will have not been to a festival for two and a half years. I would be hyped for this lineup if all it consisted of was one of those guys who plays 20 different instruments all at the same time. Next up, Coronation Street is doing a plotline inspired by Sophie Lancaster, the goth girl who was killed in 2007 for being a goth. Okay, so again, this story isn't fun, but I think it's important and I like that they are doing it. The writers actually worked with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation to make sure that the story was told correctly and does Sophie justice, and I really like that. Okay, sorry, that was, again, a very serious story. Let's move on to something more fun. And finally, there is the story of a couple that used a metal song for their first dance at their wedding, which I'm not gonna lie, was my idea, and they stole it, and I hate them. <laughs> to be fair, this couple went all the way with it. It's not like they played an Iron Maiden track for their first dance. No, they played You Suffer by Napalm Death as their first dance song, and that's incredible. <laughs> Genuinely, that is the most amazing thing. I am so jealous. There is a link to that video in the description. Please do go check it out on their channel. Give them the love, not just me. Um, anyway, that is everything for Metal Monthly. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you've listened to any of those albums I mentioned earlier, let me know in the comments what you thought of them. Thank you for watching. My name is Rob. Follow me on the social medias, and I will see you next month.